SE3200 Yukon stores. Uh, I still have my messy diagram in the background. That's okay. I, I kind of want to use it a little bit before I erase it. I want to tell you why in the last video when I went over to my activity, I kept starting off with a four. It happens to be on this line right here, which feels a little unusual because the line above it says, I want my robot energy to be two. And then I say, you know what? I changed my mind. I want my robot energy to be something else, okay? But take a look at that something else at the end. It says, I'm gonna have a default value of four. Kind of never mind what this means. It's a little ahead of the game. But if I comment that out and I run it, it won't give me the four anymore. It will give me a default value of two. So if I go over to purchase reward, I got this default value two. It doesn't matter if I buy something and go back, even if I'm in the middle of the game or something, and I go back over, it's gonna start off with two energy because of that line. And if I uncomment this, it'll always go back to a four, and I'll explain that a little bit later. All right, so let me stop this and scroll back down so I have a nice black screen so we can see my drawing. Okay, so all this does is it's going to start the activity, which we successfully did. Okay, but what I want to do now is I want to start the activity, but say I have a certain amount of energy that I want to, I want you to know. Okay, we're going to do that by having an intent that has an extra in it. And that extra is going to have a key value pair. Okay, and that key value pair. Um, the value is going to be what I send over, and the key is going to be on the other end, very simply, how I store it, how I reference it, how I store it, you know, and this is going to be the information I get. I could change it. It'll store it back with uh, the key as the way to get access to it again later. All right, so I'm going to create something that is an extra so that when I start the activity, it not only has the activity, but it knows that this value is gonna be some number of energy. Uh, in my case, uh, zero, one, two, or three. And if anything goes wrong, I'll get that default of four. So that four was in there, so I know that that shouldn't be anything that I get. All right, now I am gonna pause and erase this. All right, clean board. So I've only got two more of my um, activities that are active here, or and two of these files that are active. I'm done with the others. So if you take a look at robotpurchase.kt, here is my key, okay? It's private. That's important for best practices for encapsulation. I'll explain how in a little bit, okay? It's a const, which means that it's top level. Top level means that it is declared before the class declaration statement. So private const and then robot or extra robot energy with the value extra robot energy. Um, here it's not a fully qualified uh, value, it's just extra robot energy. But if you thought, hmm, there's something out there in the world that might give me something called extra robot energy, you could fully qualify that and use the package name in front of extra robot energy. Uh, let's see, so what, what's next after this? Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down to a bit of code that I spent a lot of time in class explaining. And even though I did, I understand that it's not gonna be crystal clear. Uh, let me, there you go. Okay, so I create this thing that's called a companion object, all right? It's, uh, it, I put it after my custom function make purchase, okay, and it is a, companion object. Okay, I'll explain in a minute. Inside of the companion object, begin and end brace, I'm gonna make a custom function. I'm just calling mine function new intent. It happens to be grayed out because of changes I made in the main activity, which you saw me do. Um, I don't know, when I comment it back in, I suppose it'll turn to whatever color that's gonna be. So custom function, new intent, it has um, two parameters, okay? Um, the context and the value I wanna send in. Well, doesn't that look like an intent constructor? Remember our intent constructor had a context as the first thing and um, something else, 
for the second thing, okay? Um, so I want to pass the value along as robot energy. This is just a variable name. I can call it whatever I want, okay? But it will be an int, zero, one, two, or three. And this, that's also just a variable, okay? But it is of type context, so I called it lowercase context. So I'll refer to it as context. It will be a context. And I'll refer to this as robot energy. It'll be an int. All right, so my new function is called new intent, and it's got those parameters. All right, so it is going to call and return an intent, all right? So this intent has a lambda, and it says, okay, we are going to return. Now we're gonna call an intent constructor, get in context, lowercase. Where's that coming from? That's the context that I will be passing along, okay? The context that I will be passing along. And the second thing is, well, you've seen this before, the class that I wanna start with the colon colon class dot Java, talked about that last time. Oh, I don't think I remember to come back and talk about the imply in class. All right, so I'll skip it here too for a second. All right, now in order to um, make use of that extra, I need to attach it. So I need to put the extra onto the intent. Okay, so I've got the intent and then I put the extra, there's the key, there's the value. Okay, the key is that private top level const that I had up there and the robot energy is the thing that I'm getting right now, pass it along for the ride. All right, so I forgot to say what apply was in class. If anybody sees this video uh, and comes to class, remind me if I don't remember myself, but I think I forgot to talk about the apply in class. So this is a Kotlin scoping function. There's six of them, okay? It, um, you get them sprinkled throughout the course, okay? So apply lets you do stuff to a function inside of a lambda, okay? I'm inside of an intent, lambda, okay? So the important part is I'm inside of a lambda, a lambda, okay? So dot apply says I'm gonna do some more stuff that that function wasn't let me going to do, so here's an extra thing that I could do, okay? I wanna put an extra on the intent. All right, so that's my companion object. So I think I talked about everything there except for why the heck companion object that's totally newish, haven't seen anything like it. Okay, so I'll tell you what it is, but you may be more confused at this point or when I'm done. So a companion object, think of it like a static class in Java. Static and this are very glossed over, I think, because I get well, glossed over looks when I talk about static or this in class most of the time, okay? So a static object is an object of the class, kind of like it's global, I guess. So my classic example for this is something that I've done in many other classes where I make a program where it deals with three vending machines. Each of those vending machines, they have their own money that they can take in and they can track. I look at uh, vending machine A and it might have $50 in it. And I look at B and it might have $2 in it. And I look at C and it might have $8 in it. And um, so they all have, they all track this. But they're, these might be A dot money and this might be B dot money and this might be C dot money. The money that's the, that belongs to C, the money that belongs to B. So these are not static. These are instance variables for the C object. If I have something that's like static total money equals zero, and then I put $50 in A, suddenly that will go up to 50. And then I put $2 from B, it's going to say, well, now it's 52. So each of these guys can affect this, whereas A can't affect B dot money, A can't affect C dot money. Okay, so static is like, kind of like global, like it belongs to the entire class. All right, so that explains that, or does it? Hopefully. Okay, so it's static. Now we're gonna go over to our main activity and take a look. When we saw this last, uh, this was commented out and 
that was uncommented and this was uncommented okay yeah it was like that all right so i'm going to take out i'll uh, actually i'll i'll use some shortcut keys I'm used to, um, like I said, new laptop. Um, I'm used to the keys being in a different spot, so it took me a long time to do. Excuses, excuses. All right, anyhow. Okay, so instead of saying, all right, I'm going to create an intent and start the activity, I'm going to say, you know what? This is how I'm going to get the 0, 1, 2, or 3. And it, it's not... It's not like a final design, and it's very temporary, and I've never done this before, but it's like, you know, I have access to variables that are different right now, right? I have turns that could be zero, one, two, or three. So uh, I'll just say that my current energy is just the current turn number, just so I could see a different number. So not important, but um, that's why, you know, it's just for testing. Val intent equals new intent, and then some other stuff. All right, now, that new intent is now red because that robot purchase has been commented out. This is what I mean by, you know, it a companion object acts like a static object. Robot purchase dot new intent. So if I have, uh, if I want to, if I have these two classes, we've done this before. Let's see if I have a little space over here. Um, here's something that we have working currently. So we have a robot uh, view model, right? And it has a method called advanced turn. Okay, robot view model and has a method advanced turn. But inside of my main activity, I say I have a lowercase robot view model, and that's equal to. And instead of calling robot view model, we use the property delegate, but it kind of does the same thing. Um, I have now access to a robot view model, and now I can say, all right, if I want to call that advanced turn, I say, hey, robot view model, do, you know, with a with a dot, advanced turn. Okay. So we had something before where we had things in different classes that we wanted to communicate with each other. Now the difference here is that let me find it right there. Since it is a static object, this is, a, this is a method inside of a static object, I have the class itself do the call. The class itself is uppercase robot purchase. Instead of like, okay, over here last time we said lowercase robot view model. So the class name dot new intent. Okay, stuff inside. That and that. Well, this is going to end up being our key and that's going to end up being the value that gets passed along. Now, um, not, our, not our key, I'm sorry, the context. This is our context that gets passed along. So um, in this class, 3200, there's only one context that we ever touch on. That is an activity, okay? But we now have two activities, the main activity and the robot purchase. This, it could just be this, and it would work. Okay, I'm gonna run it and show you that this should work. And uh, you know what? I can't remember if I made it so the default will be um, two or not, but I'll know once I click this. I come over here, yep, it says two. So it did work, this did work, but what I forgot to fix was I'm gonna go over to robot purchase and I'm gonna come up here and I don't need to comment that line out, although I could because it's useless because this one overwrites it anyway. All right, so this line here, it gets the extra. Robot energy is get the unpack, the information from the extra. So get int extra from the intent using the key robot, extra robot energy. And if I don't find anything there, set the default to four. Now I did see that four before when this line was, um, when actually we weren't sending over the intent. So it didn't find an intent. It found nothing, so it set it to four. Okay, that's a safety measure. Otherwise, it is just going to crash. Um, or actually not compile. I think that's what happened to me. Okay, so now I should be able to not get a four, 
and not get the two that I would have if that were um, the, the line that was active. But now I should go over here and it's zero. And if I go back and I advance, now it's turn one. And remember, Ed, this is not a, a real thing, but I just wanted to show you that I, without recoding it, I had a way to make that zero, one, two, that number by the white robot kind of dynamic or just different things. Okay, so I've almost explained everything I think, except I was thinking that I still had, oh, okay. So I'm passing along the context. Take a look at where it goes. Over here in the companion object, it goes here, all right? So remember that that context was the main activity, okay? I did have some strange notation here this at main activity. So what this does is it forces this to be the, the version of this that is main activity. I didn't need it here, but if I was doing that line of code on this side for some reason, I actually might, okay? Because this context, if I said this context was this, well, here it's like an activity being called from within an activity, and so it's like, ooh, which this did you want? One, they both made a call. It was a call to a call that made this happen. So there could be a little bit of confusion there. So I talked about that in class and I said, I'm gonna leave this strange bit of code there. Not that I needed it to be that strange bit of code, but just that you know that's a concept that exists. Okay, so that's where we've left off in class. We're not done because we've passed information along to the robot view model from main activity but next, we have to figure out how to get that information, or not maybe that information, but some information back, right? We're gonna do stuff in the purchase activity side of the app, and we don't wanna just come back and lose it every time, and come back and the energy just starts all over. So we wanna go back and see that data has been saved, and we also kinda like to say, you know, here's what happened whenever we get information back from the purchase activity. All right, I'm not going to make that video today, but I'll make it soon. See you later. Bye.